All right, Matrix Seeds Video 2, the sequel, Dark Reflections. Okay, we're talking about point, this point, X, Y, any coordinate you want in the universe, when you reflect it across the, let's go with across the X axis, what you're changing is the Y value only, the Y value only. Now, every reflection matrix that we start with um, begins with the identity matrix. And then it, you're going to alter the identity matrix in some form. Now, the upper left-hand corner controls the X value. And the bottom right-hand corner controls the Y value. So if you want to leave the X alone, but change the Y to its opposite value, then you want a matrix like this, which will make that happen. Obviously, one, zero, one for the upper left, negative one for the bottom right. Go back to the picture again. Let, this time, let's go back to the XY, but we want to reflect across the y-axis to get to this point over here. Well, the x value is changing, but the y value is exactly the same. So the matrix which would, which would make that happen, where x would change, but y would not, looks like this. So these are two major c's that you need to know. What about reflecting across a different line? Go back to the beginning here. The, uh, the line y equals x, which runs right through here with the diagonal. Slope 1 goes through the origin. Well, reflecting across this line takes the point up here. That would be the point y comma x. We talked about that with the unit circle with the, uh, the whole property about cosines and sines and how they switched places. That was called the complements theorem. Well, same thing is here happening here. You're switching X and Y. So if you want to take the original matrix, the identity matrix, and switch X and Y, call that the matrix reflection of Y equals X. You would take the bottom row and move it up. Oh. Sorry, did that backwards. Bottom row moves up. Top row moves down. Here, so I don't look like a complete idiot, I'll redo it so that it looks better. Um, lastly, the last reflection matrix would be to reflect across another line, y equals negative x to take this point right here and come across to the other side. Now, I know I'm going to land down here inside my identity matrix here, but uh, oh well. Not only does this one switch X and Y, it also makes both of them negative, so this point down here is negative Y, negative X. So we want to make both of them negative and switch their locations. So, if you wanted to make both of them negative and switch their locations, it would look like this. So those are your basic reflection matrices. Another type of change that you could make, besides reflecting a set of coordinates in a matrix, is we could do um, size changes. A size change is when you change the X and the Y by the same amount. So for instance, the size change of 4 would be 4004. That's different than a scale change. Um, in a scale change, they are different amounts. 
In this case, I would be tripling the x's and doubling the y's. We've talked about scale changes before when it came to equations, so this idea shouldn't be any different or new to you. It's just in a matrix format. Now, rotations. Not only can we reflect or do size changes and scale changes, but we can also rotate images or coordinates. Now, I know that this rotation theta matrix looks a little weird. It's got cosine, cosine, sine, and opposite sine. You'll notice that I kind of followed cosine, cosine, sine, opposite sine, kind of in an X pattern. Okay, I have no idea where I was because I got interrupted by... Mr. Beauchamp. Anyway, so let's see here. Um, I've written this out in two different ways. One, so that you can see the exact thing that, uh, the exact representation or definition. But I also wrote it out in a different way, the way that we talked about it on the unit circle. Yes, the unit circle, I know, you love it. But we also talked about how cosine was the x value on the circle, and sine was the y value on the circle. So, I might describe it to you this way, x value, x value, y value, opposite y value. So, let's see if we can find uh, a few of these rotation matrices, of which there are many, many, many rotation matrices, but they all follow the same pattern. So, here we have a unit circle. And we want to find a rotation matrix for 90. 90 degrees, the top of the circle. That is the coordinate 0, 1. X, X, Y, opposite Y. There we go. We got the rotation 90 matrix. Now, in a little while, I'll explain to you or show you why we use all these different matrices, because what we're going to be doing, or what we can do with them, is manipulate points. Uh, lots of your um, computerized cartoon stuff that you see on, uh, on TV and in movies uses the idea of point manipulation. Using a computer, they can generate an object, and they can move it, rotate it, reflect it, uh, make a size change or a scale change, and they're using computer technology to do that. So, uh, rotation 180. 180 sits over here. That's the point negative 1, 0. So we have x value, x value, y value, opposite y value, and obviously the opposite of 0 is still 0. What about 270? R270. That's the point 0, negative 1. X value, X value, Y value, opposite Y value. 360. X value, X value, Y value, opposite Y value. Oh, look, the identity matrix, right? Because rotating something 360 degrees does not change the identity of something, right? So 360 was at 1, 0. Yeah, that makes sense. Rotating at 360 does not do anything to the object. What about 45 degrees, right? The radical 2 over 2, comma, radical 2 over 2. Oh, look, children will be coming to my room any moment. Radical 2 over 2, x value, x value, y value, opposite y value. Rotation 7 pi over 6, oh yes, you still have to know your unit circles. 7 pi over 6 sits down here, right? It's got negative radical 3 over 2, comma, Negative one-half. All right, we'll stop the video. Okay, when we last left our superhero, we were discussing the whole rotations. And uh, sorry, we got preempted for that commercial break. Um, 7 pi over 6 was what we were dealing with. 
it had an x value at negative radical 3 over 2 and a y value at negative 1 half. Uh, therefore, my matrix for this is going to be uh, negative radical 3 over 2. That's the x value. The y value, negative radical 3 over 2. The y value, negative 1 half. And the opposite of y value, positive 1 half. So that's my... My rotation 7 pi over 6 matrix. What about my rotation negative 2 pi over 3? Well, negative 2 pi over 3, right? That's negative 1 pi over 3, negative 2 pi over 3. It's got an x value at negative 1 half, so I fill that in. It's got a y value towards the bottom of the circle. Negative radical 3 over 2, and its opposite, positive radical 3 over 2. So x, x, y, opposite y. Yes, you will need to know your unit circle. I know you don't want to know your unit circle, but you should. All right, now composites are when we put these things together. So... This says Rx, or a reflection across the x-axis. This circle represents the word following. So this is like saying Rx following a rotation of 90 degrees. So technically what happens first is the rotation of 90, then followed by a reflection across the x-axis. But the nice thing about matrices and composites is that we can write them in the order that they are seen written down so rx now if we're reflecting across the x-axis that's changing the y value and if we're rotating around the or, or around the origin 90 degrees that's x x y opposite y now when you look right here in column 1, you're going to notice the coordinate x, y, which is for 90 degrees. Maybe that'll help you as you to know your rotation matrices. So the big question is, what do you get when you... Okay, so we're multiplying these together, and we multiply this row times this column, and we get 0 plus 0. That's not too hard to figure out. Then we stay with the first row, move to the second column, negative 1 plus 0. We go down to the second row, keeping that with the first column, 0 plus negative 1. And 0 plus 0 for the last second row, second column. Now, that's the matrix that you get when you multiply those together, but what single type of reflection or rotation is that one right there. That is the reflection across the line y equals negative x. You can probably refer back in your notes to uh, doing that one just a few minutes ago. We can also, so some more practice with these. A rotation of 70 following a reflection across the y-axis. So, in reality, the reflection happens first, and the rotation happens second. All I'm going to do is put them in the order that I see them. In order to find out what single matrix we come up with. Rotating 270. 270 is at the bottom of the circle. That's the point 0, negative 1. X, X, Y, opposite Y. Reflecting across the y-axis changes the x-value, but only the x-value. So that's my reflection across y. Okay, so row times column. Row times column. That gives me uh, 0 plus 0. Row times column. 0 plus 1. Uh, row times column, 1 plus 0, and 0 plus 0. 
So there it is, and the single matrix that it's equal to is R Y equals X. It certainly doesn't fit the rotation pattern X, X, Y, opposite Y, because that one right there is an opposite of the bottom left. That's another good way to even know about this one up here. X, X, Y, opposite Y, so it doesn't fit the rotation pattern. It must be a reflection pattern. Okay, we could also do these composites by identifying a set of words. Identify a matrix which fits the description. Opposite X's and opposite Y's. So which matrix out there changes the X values and the Y values? Well, here's the matrix. What is that matrix? Well, let's see if it fits a rotation pattern. X, X, Y, opposite Y. So it indeed does follow the rotation pattern. So the name of this rotation is sitting right here in the first column. Where is negative 1, 0 on the circle? Negative 1, 0 is over here. This must be the R180 matrix. Well, we want opposite x values. Opposite x values, that would be like this. Followed by switching x and y. So after we switch x and y, that takes the bottom row. What you're doing is interchanging the rows. 0, 1 comes to the top. Negative 1, 0 goes to the bottom. So opposite x's, that's the first one. Followed by switching x and y. What single matrix does this represent? Well, let's see if it fits a rotation pattern. X, X, Y, opposite Y. Yes, that fits a rotation pattern. And the name of what you see in that column right there tells you the rotation that we're dealing with. Where is 0, negative 1 on the circle? 0, negative 1. That is the rotation 270 matrix. Now, what can we do with these composites? We can, or with any of this multiplication, we could talk about Rx um, of 2, 3, 4, 5. In other words, here's a set of two points, the coordinate 2, 4, and the coordinate 3, 5. And we want to do a reflection of those. So... The reflection across the x-axis changes the y value, 2, 3, 4, 5. The top row, 1, 0, leaves that each one of these entries in the top row of this one the same. The bottom row causes those denominate or those bottom values to become their opposite. So if you were to think about uh, 2, 4, 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 3, 5, and take that little line segment and rotate it 90 degrees, it would be at 2, or reflect it across the x-axis, not rotate it, but reflect it, it would be at 2, negative 4, and 3, negative 5, so it would be down here. And we could do this with any set of points, whether it's a shape like a triangle or a square or anything, any kind of shape. We can use this matrix to reflect them, or we can use rotation matrices, or we can do a combination, reflect across the X, following our 90 uh, of the point. 4, negative 7. We can do it with just a single coordinate. See what happens to that. So uh, Rx, that's 1, 0, 0, negative 1. R90 is uh, 0, 0, 1, opposite 1, or negative 1. 
times 4, negative 7. Well, I'm going to figure out this stuff first before I use it on the coordinate. So, row times column, 0. Row times column, negative 1. Row times column, negative 1. Row times column, 0. So, we're really reflecting this across y equals negative x. And what does it turn into? Well, row 1 times column 1, 0 plus 7. Row 2 times column 1, negative 4 plus 0. There it is. The line has been reflected across y equals negative x. Okay, that's enough notes for now. We'll talk more.